I'm uh, Dr. John McGuire. I attended college at the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. Went to medical school at the University of Minnesota and then did my uh, residency and fellowship at the uh, Rehab Institute of Chicago, uh, affiliated with Northwestern University in Chicago, and then uh, worked in Chicago at the Rehab Institute of Chicago for five years. And uh, now for the last 14 years, I've been at the Medical College of Wisconsin, uh, affiliated with Freighter Hospital here in, uh, in Milwaukee. Upper motor neuron syndrome essentially is where you have a complex of muscle underactivity and muscle overactivity and contractures. So everyone has, so you have to address all three of those buckets if you want to manage those patients. And so now with the emergence of the botulinum toxins or uh, intrathecal baclofen, we're now able to relax some of this overactive muscle. Uh, but we still have struggle with how do you recruit or uptrain weaker muscles and then how do you actually get a better stretch on, uh, on the limb. So patients who have very tight um, elbow flexors where they're clenched like this so you can't uh, clean in their uh, elbow crease here, uh, we can inject uh, the elbow flexors, get them uh, so that it's easier to stretch the arm out, but if you don't put them in a in the proper splint or a splint they can tolerate to maintain that stretch they're just going to reinnervate right back where they were and so it's critical that we have a splinting mechanism that will um, accommodate sort of or can be adjusted so that they can um, take advantage of the increased range that we get as they start to loosen up. The advantage of using Dyna splints over uh, static splinting is that you can adjust the splint to take advantage of any range of motion they're gonna gain over time. That's why we do the splinting. We do the splinting to hopefully gain range. And so this type of splinting mechanism will, will let us take advantage of that. I also like the fact that it's it's custom fitted to the patient and can be adjusted so they get a better fit, so they tend to tolerate it. The other advantage is the fact that um, I can inspect the skin or the um, caregiver or who's working with the patient or even the patient can make sure that they're not getting uh, skin breakdown in certain areas because some splints where you just put them in it and they may not be fitting properly, they're going to get uh, potential for skin breakdown. So I've seen much less skin breakdown with it. Earlier intervention is better than later intervention because once they get so tight and contracted, then it is more of a problem. So uh, the patients that are in the hospital already, and we can actually do even temporary blocks and get them in a, in, in a Dyna splint, um, we've had nice success with that. And so have we prevented contractures down the road with these patients? Yes. And so in that case, we did save because uh, would they have potentially developed uh, uh, contractures that would have required surgery or had skin breakdown? Possibly. It's been frustrating because not all insurances or we can't always get Dynasplints for, for all my patients. And so if we have to rely on uh, other prefabbed or something that we make or casting, uh, in, in some cases we get suboptimal effect. And I find that if I can get them in the Dynasplint sooner rather than later, we, we get a much better effect. If you're a patient that has problematic sort of uh, loss of range of motion and whether it's uh, well pretty much almost anywhere and you have tighter muscles in those areas then um, you need to look at what type of splinting mechanism you have because if you're not getting proper stretch you know, on those areas then you're not going to gain any you're certainly not going to gain any range you may even start to lose range so that's why I like the the Dyna splint we get a much better stretch on the uh, hand or wrist elbow and then also at the knee or at the ankle. I recommend it. Mm -hmm.